It's a god awful small affair. Hello guys, back at you today with another movie review, and this time we are talking about, yes, I've promised it for a while, Paul Thomas Anderson's Licorice Pizza. Nominated for three Academy Awards, only three, but three of the biggest categories in the show being original screenplay, best director, and of course, the ever so coveted best picture. So, I'll tell you right now, I was so beyond excited for this movie. Once I actually realized, like, oh, there's a new Paul Thomas Anderson movie coming out, I was like, well, I gotta see this. And it was just one of those things where I even tried, like, my friend and I, you know, Zach on the channel, we went down to Florida. We were hoping it was there, and it, it wasn't uh, before Christmas. But as soon as it came to the theaters, we went and saw it. And I tell you, it is, I mean, as people have been saying, it's one of the best movies of the year. I mean, there's a reason it is in the best picture category. And for my money, it is one of the best films in there. Now, what is Licorice Pizza about, Nathaniel? Well, let me tell you. It's, it's about this girl named Alana, who's 25, and this boy, and I say boy, Gary Valentine, uh, who's played by Cooper Hoffman, the son of the late, great Philip Seymour Hoffman, and obviously Alana, played by Alana Heim. And basically, it's a kind of about their um, relationship that they have, and, and kind of like their goings and, and, and throughout L.A., and it's just kind of them uh, wandering around uh, doing whatever. And, you know, I know the, the premise of that sounds a bit off-putting, and yes, I understand if anybody has uh, reservations uh, uh, with kind of the age gap uh, between the two characters, uh, completely understandable. But, no, I, I think the thing, it's so beautiful uh, what Paul Thomas Anderson uh, does here with these characters because, really... Despite like the age difference and, and, and all that stuff, you look at what these characters mean to each other and, and just their interactions together. I mean, there's a reason this was nominated for screenplay, and as far as I'm concerned, I'd probably uh, pick it to win original screenplay, but obviously Kenneth Braun is going to take that award. Because uh, the dialogue, it's just it's just so delectable, and, and really just the interactions they have, they're so humorous, so witty. Uh, really, but just the chemistry those two share on screen is, is why you watch the movie. But really, I just have to talk about how magnificent um, Alana Heim and Cooper Hoffman are because really you'd have thought by seeing this movie that they had been acting forever. They are just so good. There's something so otherworldly about Alana Heim that I just can't take my eyes off of her. Uh, she's just, oh my goodness. Also, I'm very, very attracted to her. Alana, you're watching this video, let's talk sometime. Uh, anyway, I mean, Cooper, though, he's such a charming presence uh, throughout the entire movie. And you just really, really, really enjoy his presence. But really, that's the thing. He has a lot of presence on screen. Same with Alana, especially. But, you know, there was one shot where I was watching this, and I was like, that's Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, it, it was just uncanny uh, watching him up on screen there. But really, I mean, some of the best debut performances I've seen in a while. And I think, you know, this is going to make them movie stars, especially Alana Heim, because she already is, you know, a star in her own right with her band, with her sisters, who are also in this movie, funnily enough. That was pretty great uh, to see them actually cast her real life family in there as her family in this. But yeah, there, I mean, this movie would not work if Paul Thomas Anderson didn't have the good sense to cast them in the central roles. I mean, really, just I was blown away by their performances, but also just what their characters and, and, and their interactions, what they mean to each other. Because they're both looking for something. I mean, Gary, as someone put interview, is 15 going on 30. He's very charismatic. Uh, he knows his way around town. Everybody knows him. They treat him like an adult, uh, funnily enough. And then there's Alana, who's 25, who really doesn't know what she's doing with her life. Uh, but knows that there's more to it than just, you know, Gary going around and doing, you know, immature things with his friends. Because 
Look, I mean, he is 15 years old, and, and so you it creates a very interesting dichotomy between these characters, and even though they don't fall on the same page of everything, they still kind of need each other in, in some way, and it's a really, really interesting dynamic. And the thing that also is so great about this movie, I mean, it's a hangout movie, it, it is, but really there's like this underlying tension uh, throughout, even though nothing like plot heavy is, is even happening in the movie, it's just kind of like... It's like it's really a great page turner. Like, oh, what's going to happen next? Who's going to show up? I mean, the people they encounter. You have uh, Sean Penn playing uh, Jack Holden, who I believe is you know a stand-in for uh, actor William Holden, and a bunch of other just random people popping up. There's this really racist um, guy who owns this like Japanese restaurant, and he talks in like a fake uh, Asian accent. Um, and obviously you're supposed to be making fun of him, um, and it's like the early 70s, so of course you get a lot of those people. But it's like so bizarre, the, the, the people that they just run into. There's this one really, really bizarre casting agent um, who who uh, Gary kind of hooks up with, Alana, helping her try to, try to get a role in, in Hollywood. And it's just so interesting, but really the standout to me, and who I think personally should have been nominated uh, for Best Supporting Actor, is... One and the one and only Mr. Bradley Cooper, who plays John Peters, the the famous or maybe in some case infamous. I mean, he's a very interesting guy. Um, he plays him in this movie to an utmost insane degree. Uh, I mean, every second he's on screen, and he's only in the movie for less than ten minutes. He steals every single scene that he is in and I think by far that is the standout segment of the movie he's so erratic in his behavior you never know what he's gonna do next but you can't take your eyes off of him he's so compelling um, but yeah so obviously I, he didn't get in that's fine I, I kind of understand he was in the movie for a limited time but if Beatrice Strait can uh, win an Oscar for coming into a movie for five minutes in network uh, you know they could have nominated Bradley Cooper at the very least but of course, I mean, obviously the movie's shot to perfection, and it, it isn't one of those movies that's uh, visually striking like Belfast or, or, or Dune or West Side Story or anything like that, but obviously, I mean, it completely recreates the look and feel of 1970s, uh, early 1970s San Fernando Valley, and the soundtrack is just killer. You have The Doors, you have Paul McCartney and Wings, you have Bing Crosby, it's so many, so many tracks on there. You, you, I think you even got some Motown in there. And of course, I mean, the trailer hooked me with uh, David Bowie's uh, Life on Mars. Uh, absolutely, David Bowie's uh, magnum opus for sure. So that really already got me intrigued. Um, but even the way it's used in the movie is great. I mean, it's just a killer, killer soundtrack. Maybe, uh, maybe the absolute best of the year. I don't know. It, it's right at the top. And... Um, I see a score from Johnny Greenwood, which isn't you know necessarily right in the front. Uh, it's it's pretty understated, not in the same way that the score for Power of the Dog or Spencer is, but I, I think it you know it works for what it is. But really, it, it's just about the interaction between these characters, these little side uh, subplots that they go on, where Gary's trying to sell uh, waterbeds and starting a waterbed business, and then like his friend just saying to him, "It's like, oh, what if we, okay, hey, maybe we can sell weed to these customers while well, they're <laughs> you know trying to get their uh, waterbeds." It, it's just crazy, and then uh, Alana going with. Um, you know, working on uh, working with a politician uh, played by Benny Safdie. Um, you know, the directing duo, the Safdie brothers, and I mean, just one thing after another, all these misadventures, if you will. And then, of course, with John Peters. Uh, so really, it's it's just them kind of figuring out what they're doing with their lives, and and just them interacting with each other. And I know it sounds like simple and in a lot of ways it is but it feels so much more complex than that and and one of those great and memorable coming of age story that has so many laugh out loud moments that i just some of the funniest moments from any movie last year and and quite genuinely i, I think it's one of uh, paul thomas anderson's uh, best films and i think his best film in in quite some time it's it's probably my favorite uh after magnolia even yeah, I, I really did just love watching these characters interact with each other, 
and just everybody around them. So you know what? I am going to give Licorice Pizza a 9 out of 10. Absolutely a prestige picture uh, that deserves to be in, in the best picture race. And yeah, I mean, what else can I say about it? If you guys have seen it already, let me know what you think about it. I know that there's a lot of uh, differing opinions on a lot of things, understandably so, but for my money, I just I can't get enough of it. I honestly can't wait to see it again. Um, but yeah, if, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Smash that like button if you like what I'm doing on this channel here. And stay tuned for more of these Best Picture reviews because they're coming your way as well as I've said before, my list for the top 10 albums of the 1980s. Stay tuned, guys.